This circuit board was sent for our perusal a while ago by Michael. He'd had it in a light and it failed and it did that usual thing that the LEDs all crack and burn out. But it's quite an interesting circuit board and I'll show you the enlarged form of this since uh, I've not had to take anything apart. It's all ready for photography. So let's zoom in on this and we'll take a look at the circuitry. We have the incoming supply, we have two 10 ohm resistors to limit the inrush current. We have a tiny little surface mount metal oxide varistor by the way, it says VR1. Then a bridge rectifier that converts the AC into DC and then the option and pads for another metal oxide varistor. And then the LEDs are actually current limited by 1, 2, 3 uh, BP5136H drivers. And this is a typical circuit used with these. But it's not using a typical circuit. Uh, normally, you'd have the LEDs divided into four sections, and as the voltage of the sine wave rose up and down, it would initially light the first section, and once the current uh, threshold was reached, it would then light the second, and then the third. So as the voltage went up and down, it would light progressive numbers of LEDs. And it gives a strange... If you look at it through a camera, it sometimes gives us a flickering effect. I can't do that with this one because uh, it's dead. That's why I can't do it. But interestingly here, for the final stage, they've actually got two 2K resistors, 4K in total across that. It's quite unusual. And they've done that separately to each and every chip, but then commoned all these parallel connections up. Also, this is a resistor that sets the current by the current sense. So the current flows through the LEDs, goes through the current sense resistor, and uh, it will uh, regulate the overall current in the circuit. But... Uh, there is some extra circuitry in this one, and it's based around a couple of transistors here that seem to switch in other resistors. The reason there's so many links, uh, it looks a busy circuit board. It's not as busy as it looks. There are tons of links because these chips are effectively commoned with uh, three separate circuits driving these LEDs. But there's a couple of transistors here, and I, the, without actually trying the circuit board, because I can't, because it's dead... Uh, I'm going to make a wild guess. Given the circuitry around that, it's quite hard to trace out because it is a aluminium core PCB. More about that later. Uh, which stops you shining light from the back. But uh, it also has the white solder resist, which makes it very hard tracing the tracks out, particularly when it's a bit grubby and close together like this. But I think these transistors are effectively acting as a sort of toggle and might be allowing that function. You can turn the light on and off and it'll change to different intensities. Not really sure. But what we're interested in right now is what's going on here with these burnt LEDs because this is so common in these things and this is why uh, it, the fact that there's an aluminium substrate is a bit of an issue. So as happens, you can see damage in other LEDs here. As happens LEDs, they've baked them now. Are these the hard ones or are these the soft gel? Or were they soft gel that's gone hard now? It's pretty hard. Uh, phosphor loaded sort of resin maybe it was gel I'm not really sure it's hard now but uh, what can happen is cracks can happen in, in that and the thermal expansion and contraction and the cycling basically causes uh, the circuitry the dyes inside the bonds to snap off and you end up with an open circuit and when you get an open circuit because these operate with quite a high voltage and the open circuit has that high voltage across it, you end up the sort of burning a tracking arc. And this is a really major issue with the aluminium substrates PCBs. And the reason for that, I shall show you this. This is a standard piece of circuit board material. It's a solid piece of fiberglass and then it's got a thin shim of copper on the surface. And to make the circuit board the photographically transfer an image onto this and then they et develop it and then etch it off with ferric chloride or copper chloride and that removes the unwanted copper and just leaves the tracks where they're needed and then there's a load of other processes drilling and printing the uh, silk screen and solder resist and things like that but with the aluminium core PCBs it's slightly different the main bulk of the core is a piece of aluminium. And the reason for this is for heat dissipation. But on that aluminium then is a super wafer thin piece of the fiberglass and then the copper. But the downside of this is that quite often when these fail, I don't know if this one's done it, they don't all do it. 
let me grab a meter and we'll try. Although, to be honest, I should be testing this at high voltage to get an accurate result here. But if I scrunch my leads through there, I might possibly find, I don't know, that the uh, that it's perforated right through to the... Um, oh, very crispy. Right through to the uh, aluminium, as I've found in other ones. And when that happens, I think I need to do a high voltage test on this because uh, it will have broken down the fiberglass underneath, but it's not uh, it's not testing through with a low voltage test. But when it does burn through, and there is a fairly common problem, you end up with a dead light and it starts conducting onto the back plate. And because uh, some of these lights are not earthed properly. The wire, there's an earth wire into the light, but it's not actually connected to anything. It's just floating in thin air. I don't know why they do this. It's very common for the grey imports. But uh, the other issue is this bridge rectifier here, because the current leakage to the aluminium plate in the back, or aluminium if you so prefer, will have a DC bias. And this is where the RCDs that would theoretically pick up that leakage um, because this will be current limiting, so it won't it won't just go bang and trip the circuit breaker. There will be current limiting through the circuitry here. But uh, the risk is that if, even if there's an RCD that you'd think would normally pick that up, or, or GFCI, the majority of them used in places like America and Britain are type AC circuit breaker uh, RCDs, which are really only designed to detect a sinusoidal leakage, like say for instance, basically the power outside here before it actually reaches here, like if the cable got pinched or water got into the junction box. But when it goes through this, you have a situation where you need a specialist type of RCD to pick that up. And Germany is way ahead of the pack. For ages, they've not allowed AC circuit breakers because they obviously saw the electronics, the progress of electronic stuff happening and all their houses are protected by type A or B circuit breakers, which can detect uh, the choppy DC in these, or smooth DC from, from, say, something like a car charger. Or in the case of the high-frequency power supplies, they can detect the noise, the high-frequency switching output, which can often be defeating, it can often defeat standard circuit breakers. So this is an issue. Uh, it means that you really have to ground uh, these floodlights and make sure that there is connection between the earth wire and the case. Give it a good, decent test. Ideally a pat test at high current, but any continuity test is going to be better than nothing in this particular situation. Um, and uh, it means that really, as time goes on, maybe Britain and America are dragging their heels and they need to update and start enforcing the use that all new RCDs and distribution boards need to actually be the modern, slightly more sophisticated type that can detect all the other fault scenarios other than just like damaged wiring. So um, that is really the way things are going. I've come across so many of these that they have leaked onto the case and people are reporting that they're getting shocks off uh, fittings when they go and check while they're not working and they touch them and get a zap because uh, it is leaking onto the aluminium and unfortunately because either they've not earthed it or grounded it or it's got that, that missing wire, it provides an alternative path of current and that's through them. So, uh, yes, maybe the... Uh, IET in the UK, which is our electrical sort of regulatory body, the ones that actually makes up the regulations, maybe they should actually look at enforcing the progress towards type B circuit breakers, uh, RCD, GFCI type circuit breakers to detect the progressive number of faults like this that are going to be increasingly happening in the future.